In this lecture, we're going to begin talking about sensory systems, and I just want to remind you about the basic flow of information. Afferent is neuronal projections to, and we think about sensory when we're thinking about uh, afferent, and efferent is neuronal projections from, and we mostly are thinking about motor information when we're talking about efferent. So remember, afferent arrives and efferent exits. So sensory information is information concerning your external environment. So the sound of my voice, the look of these slides, um, the birds you can hear singing out the window, the, the feel of uh, the chair underneath of you, all of those things are from your external environment. And you have sensory information coming from your internal environment as well. Uh, when you're hungry, um, if you have an ache or a pain, um, uh, or if something's going wonky with your digestive system, um, you will have a sensation about that. And so what we're going to talk about is uh, the differences between these systems, some of their commonalities, and how they all get to the central nervous system. In this, this section of lectures, we're going to mostly talk about the spinal nerves. The sensory modalities that are associated with the cranial nerves, we'll talk about in the cranial nerves lecture. And so sensory information coming in from the periphery is going to be relayed through uh, primary sensory neurons, and those primary sensory neurons uh, reside in the dorsal root ganglion. Those can be seen here in the real spinal cord. This is the spinal cord. These are your dorsal rootlets, and this is a dorsal root ganglion full of uh, dorsal root ganglion neurons. And if you recall, um, in the spinal cord lectures, we talked about the spinal nerve here. This is an example of that dorsal primary ramus that we talked about and a ventral primary ramus. These are parts of your spinal nerves that are going to the dorsum and part of the spinal nerve going to the ventral. So you have sensation on both sides. This is to remind you that you have different modalities of sensation. Uh, you have hot, cold, gross touch, fine touch, pressure, and the, all of those kinds of receptors are found in your skin. I'm not going to ask you to memorize um, which receptor is responsible for what modality, but this is an image from Dr. Uh, Alsup's lecture on the integumentary system and it shows you where you have uh, lamellated corpuscles, uh, you have little nerve endings associated with hair follicles, all kinds of uh, touch corpuscles, and all of these are going to relay, um, or actually represent nerve endings out here in the skin. All of these are connected to a dorsal root ganglion neuron. The viscera also have sensation but for the most part, because they're not exposed to the outside, they're mostly concerned with stretch. Um, and some are also concerned with things like ischemia um, or chemical differences. For example, um, the ischemia associated with a heart attack, <laughs> unfortunately. But viscera then um, don't have as many of these kind, different kinds of receptors. In the next section, we're going to talk more about um, the different types of modalities and where they travel and where they synapse within the spinal cord. So as we talked about in the spinal cord lectures, when we talked about um, the different areas of the spinal cord gray matter, we talked about um, somatic afferent and visceral afferent. And these are the two different kinds of modalities that are, or broad modalities that are represented in the spinal cord dorsal horn. Here we have, again, from your surface as your somatic afferents or your somatic sensory, and here in that intermediate zone is going to be this visceral afferents or visceral sensories. And they're kind of represented by these hatched areas here and here. 
So we have a couple of different modalities um, within the somatic system. Gross touch versus fine touch. They're both somatic uh, afferents, but they have different patterns, and we'll talk in a lot of detail about where they travel in the next two segments. Um, but for the most part, gross touch is simply kind of an awareness where you've bumped up against something. Um, gross touch also travels with pain and temperature, so hot or cold, any kind of noxious stimulus and gross touch are grouped together. And then there's another set of modalities, fine touch, uh, proprioception, i.e. knowing where your arms and legs and where your body is in space is called proprioception, and vibration sense. Those three modalities uh, travel together within the, the spinal cord and within the brain. Gross touch and fine touch travel through different areas of the spinal cord white matter. So gross touch, pain, and temperature, um, once they make their synapses, and we'll go into more detail in a later section of this lecture, ascends in the anterolateral system. So 100 years ago, when I was a student, this, these uh, tracks were called the ventral and lateral spinal thalamic tracks because they start in the spine and they go to the thalamus. But now we group them together and we call them the anterolateral system. And this is where gross touch, pain, and temperature travel. Fine touch, proprioception, and vibration sense travel in the dorsal columns. Okay, right here. And you'll notice this little divide. This is because the legs are represented in this area legs and lower abdomen and the arms and the trunk are in or the chest are represented in this area. So two different systems uh, for different modalities of sensation. Gross touch, pain and temperature, fine touch, vibration, and proprioception. So what do I want you to know from the just the basics of the of the uh, sensory system from the introduction is I really want you to remember that afferent is sensory. What are the differences between somatic and visceral sensations? Where do they come into the gray matter in the cord in the dorsal horn? And why is a DRG neuron important? What is it project? Where is it projecting to and from? And basically what I didn't write down here, but remember you should know the difference and we'll get into more of it in detail later. The difference between um, gross touch and gross touch pain and temperature fine touch, proprioception, and vibration. If you know the differences between these things, then you're going to be ready for the assessment. In this lecture, we're going to talk about gross touch, pain, and temperature, where these, uh, where the neurons live in this dorsal root ganglion, how many neurons are in this relay race that from to get that gets from sensation to brain, and we'll talk about um, all the different parts um, of the of the chain as we go up. So first, you have a receptor in the skin. Let me turn on my thing. So there's the receptors in the skin. Um, remember from the integumentary lecture um, and from the intro to this section that there's sensory nerve endings in the skin. They're attached or part of the uh, dorsal root ganglion neuron, a primary sensory neuron, um, which then projects into the spinal cord. It's represented here, peripheral processes, DRG neuron in here, going into the dorsal horn. Pain, gross touch, pain, and temperature are actually going to synapse within the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. So gross touch, pain, and temperature is a three neuron chain. Um, it takes three neurons to get, relay that sensation from the periphery all the way into your somatosensory cortex. Neuron one lives in the dorsal root ganglion, as we've discussed. 
Neuron 2 lives in the dorsal horn of the appropriate spinal level. And Neuron 3 lives all the way up here in the central nervous system in the thalamus. We'll talk a lot about the thalamus um, later when we talk about uh, the cortex and the rest of the brain. But what I want you to know about it for now is that it's one of the relays on the way uh, of sensory information coming in from the periphery. And then the thalamus projects to that primary somatosensory cortex when we talked about the gross anatomy of the brain, uh, the post-central gyrus as your primary somatosensory cortex. In the next segment, we'll go through um, more of the details of gross, pain, gross touch, pain, and temperature and its path from periphery to CNS. So the pathway from, for gross touch, pain, and temperature starts in the skin with some sort of stimulus, bumping up against something, pain, maybe the prick of a rose bush or something other, something else that's painful, or temperature, warm water, cold water, your coffee mug in the morning. That is relayed via the dorsal root ganglion neuron into the spinal cord. From the viscera, it's going to be some sort of stretch receptor um, but it, again, it's relayed by a dorsal root ganglion neuron into the spinal cord. The second neuron in the chain is an interneuron that lives in the dorsal horn. So the, the first neuron's out here, second neuron is in here. It receives information from that primary sensory neuron. Now what's important about this second neuron is that its axon crosses the midline right here and then turns to go towards the brain. So neuron number two is a relay neuron. It crosses the midline. This area is known as the ventral white commissure. It's kind of redundant that we call it a white commissure because by definition, if it's a commissure, it's a big myelinated bundle of fibers. We don't really need to call it white too, but they do. So ventral white commissure is this area where the second neuron in the chain crosses the midline. It then joins all of the rest of the fibers that are carrying this modality, which we have already called the anterolateral system, okay? If you read an old textbook, you may see the terms spinal thalamic tract, um, and that is the old terminology for the anterolateral system. In the next slide, the third neuron in the chain is in the thalamus. The thalamic neuron, or the neuron in the thalamus, projects to primary sensory cortex, which is in your post-central gyrus. This is where pain or gross temp, uh, pain, gross touch and temperature come to uh, perception. This is where you actually quote unquote feel it. You don't feel it in the DRG, you don't feel it in the spinal cord, and you don't feel it in your thalamus. You feel it in the postcentral gyrus. That's where it comes to perception. In the next couple of slides we'll go through this entire pathway from start to finish in a couple of different formats. Um, to help you solidify it, um, and then if you can draw this, uh, you'll be really, you'll be really good and uh, really ready for the assessment. So to reiterate what happens, um, ha or what happens in the chain of 
gross touch, pain, and temperature sensations reaching the brain. I want to use this as a blank, um, and for you to use this, hopefully, as a blank to practice drawing this pathway. So I'm going to draw it, um, and if you've printed this, you can draw along with me. Um, and we'll start with, um, let's see, here we go. Here's a hot mug of coffee. Steam, steam. And here's your hand. Sort of. I'm not the artist, okay? So, hot, cold, temperature, whatever it is, pain, uh, if this is really hot, there are receptors in your skin that are connected to a dorsal root ganglion neuron, which then sends that information into the dorsal horn, okay? So this is number one neuron in the chain. I like to think of it as a relay, a relay race. So you've got the neuron one picks up the baton, which is the signal from whatever sensations out here, and relays it to neuron number two, which is in the dorsal horn. Gray matter. Okay, the dorsal horn neuron then picks up that information at the appropriate level, so don't worry about where I'm drawing the levels in. That axon crosses the midline, okay? It's going to cross the midline and go all the way up to the thalamus. It crosses, where it crosses the midline, we call it the ventral white commissure. And this tract um, within the white matter of the spinal cord, where it, where it runs, or it is ascending, is called the anterolateral system. The ALS then is present at all levels of the spinal cord, as are, you know, DRG are present at all levels, and gray matter is present at all levels. So that's the second neuron. Neuron number three is in the thalamus. Neuron number three gets information from neuron number two, and it projects to the post-central gyrus and that is where gross touch, pain, and temperature come to perception. It's where you actually notice that the mug is hot. The next section, the next slide has this a little more simplified, um, but and which is something I drew so you know it's going to be simple. So here we go. In this section, what, or in this slide, what you can see is again, we have a stimulus somewhere in the periphery, which is uh, picked up by the dorsal root ganglion neuron, which then synapses on a, horn, a neuron within the dorsal horn. This, the axon of this neuron crosses the midline, ascends in the anterolateral system, synapses on neuron number three, which then ascends to the sensory cortex where it comes to sensa uh, where that sensation comes to perception. So I hope that the combination of these two different types of drawings um, and diagrams can help you understand how gross touch, pain, and temperature are relayed from the periphery to the central nervous system. And you're going to ask, well, why why do I need to know this? Well, because find touch is different, and we'll talk about that in the next section. And so to summarize, what I want you to know is how many neurons does it take to relay gross touch, pain, and temperature from the periphery to the primary sensory cortex? Where are these no neurons located? The axon of which neuron in the chain crosses the midline? Where does this axon cross the midline? And then where does this axon travel as it ascends towards the brain, i.e. what area of the spinal cord, um, what is the name of that tract where this axon travels as it's headed toward the brain. If you know this, you're going to be ready for the assessment.